Hey, what's up? Today I want to talk about cards and card design. These ones right here. Looks simple, right? Well, a lot of times I see people with overflowing text or unresponsive grids. And so that's what we're going to tackle today. We're going to get into responsive card design. Hopefully one, a resource that you can use and you'll never need another one again. Uh, we're going to touch on a lot of topics here. I'll look at the client first version too. It's my first time using that. We will look at CSS grid. I'm going to show you how to do responsive dy design with these cards so you don't even have to touch Webflow breakpoints. Uh, we'll just do a little bit of custom CSS. We'll start with, uh, well, we'll also look at accessibility and interaction design. And now, again, this is what we're building. I'm going to start really basic and then keep leveling up as we go. So I've cloned the uh, clonable for client first version two. You can see I have just a basic card structure or page structure here. And let's see, I need to put some assets in here. Let me open this real quick. Okay, not too much. All right, let's get started. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop in a grid. We'll give this three frames for now, all one FR. I'm gonna delete the bottom row. We'll say done, let's give it a good name. We're gonna call this cards underscore components. All right, and that's all I wanna do for now. Now let's go ahead and start designing the first card. Now I'm gonna give it a div and I'm gonna call it cards underscore item. This is gonna wrap everything. Now, when we think about a card, a card has usually an image, a heading, some text, and then sometimes a button or a link or whatever. So let's start bringing those in. If I pull in an image, uh, I'll wait to choose the image for now. And then a heading, usually this is gonna be an H2 or maybe an H3, depending on where you have it in your project. I'm gonna make it an H2. And let's call it uh, Mount Shasta, I think was, was what I had going on there. And then we're gonna drag in the paragraph. Okay, let's cut this in the three lines. And now I'll start building out that little bottom piece. We'll call it cards, bottom. And this I know is gonna be flex, horizontal, and align to center. And then I just want to, let's see, I'm gonna grab just some text. No exclamation point. Climb it, this is a text block. That's looking good. This was looking good. And then let's get our image now. Okay, way too big. Set this to 1.5 rem by 1.5 rem. <coughs> And now we need to start spacing things out, right? So actually, let me name these. We'll call this cards image. We'll call this cards. Probably don't even need to name these. These are just going to be generic. Actually, it's better to just not name things if you can avoid it. And I'm going to put everything in. So we've got a div block now. We want to wrap all our content and keep that separate from our image. Um, but what I'm going to start with is just some padding for, or some spacing for the heading. So I'm just going to do margin, actually let's do margin vertical. And then we'll say margin, I think small is like one rem. Uh, I can say margin and then just start ty typing small and it'll be the first one that shows up. Great, so I have one rem <clears throat> on either side there now. And then let's put our text inside another... We'll say margin bottom, and we'll say margin small. And let's do margin medium. Okay, that's looking pretty good. This grid here, so back to cards component, I'm gonna make the spacing two rem, and spacing between rows four rem. All right, now let's think about our image. So we want this image to take up 100% of the card width, right? But notice we're not really doing anything with the um, the sizing here. Like if I just go ahead and, okay, that's great. It's 100% of the width. And now I want to drop in this picture I have of Mount Shasta. Well, it makes the card essentially look kind of, look pretty bad. Something you could do is set like a, you could set a height. It's going to squish the picture, but then set this to cover. 
Um, but that's not what I'm in the practice of doing now is I wrap all the cards in a in their wrapper div. So call this cards image wrap. And this wrapper is going to control the height as well as we'll do some other things with it for interactions. Get putting your images within another div is going to make interaction design later a lot easier. Um, it's pretty much necessary. Anyway, so this card image wrap, I want to give it 100% width of the parent. And then we're going to do this padding top trick where I say 56.25%. And that's going to add, it's going to create an aspect ratio for us. And what I need to do with this is set the position to relative. And then the card's image, I will set to absolute. And it's going to, well, sit it like that. It's going to sit in there, but now it's covering everything else as well. So let's set the, the image height to 100%. And now you can see it's fitting in our aspect ratio box. The last thing we need to do is change the fit to cover. And you can see we're not actually seeing the part of the picture we like. So now we're going to go to object fit. We'll come up here. We could go all the way to the top, but I think if we start bringing it a bit down, this is going to look nice. So 15 plus 20. Yeah, like 20%. Okay, and I mean, we have a basic card now. If I went ahead and copied this, now I can just swap out pictures. Let's do Mount Fuji and Mount Rainier. Now let's say I think this is a little bit too low. If I start adjusting here, it's going to adjust for all of the images that we have. So I'll go to 20 and I'll say is Rainier. Give it a combo class. That way we're only going to affect the combo class. So 30%. So I like that because now we're seeing some of the lake there. Okay, and I need to change these headings. Now, a lot of times when you get card layouts online from different component libraries, or even from the Webflow uh, layout section here, they don't account for this text being different lengths, especially in designs. Your designers will always hand you lorem ipsum text, the same thing here. But let's see if we just copy paste now. This is looking kind of broken now. This climate link just looks completely out of place. So what I'm going to do is I'll go to the cards item. And what I'm, I'm going to set it to flex vertical. And I'm going to align to the left. You don't need to align to the left. You can have stretch, but you'll notice the cards bottom. If, this, if you were to make this a link, you'll notice the div is extending all the way to the end. If we align left, since it's flex, it's going to just pull it there. So you don't want to hover in this space and have the link um, Activate. I mean, maybe you do. The other thing we can do now is take cards bottom and apply margin top of auto, and all the ones are going to come down to the bottom of the card here. And again, like now I'm looking at it, it's like, oh, this doesn't look that great either. So a lot of times when I see cards with different length here, what people will do is they will give it a background color just to, to provide some contrast. So let's give it a nice light background. And we did that, but now again, our card design is breaking because it just it has no padding, it has no room to breathe. So let's go ahead and give a one rem padding all the way around. And that's just starting to look a lot better. So, and when you think about content driven design, what I try to impress upon my clients before they even send me designs is that they have all of their copy done. I don't accept designs from clients if the copy is not all done because you'll run into a lot of issues like this where you'll have to go in and change all of your layout structure. Um, but hopefully if you have the understanding of the principles I'm teaching here, then um, it'll either be very fast for you or uh, not too painful to, to make the change. So I'm just adding a nice border radius to these. And that's looking pretty good. I think I might bring the font size down on these. Yeah, so that's looking great. One thing to think about now is what if we have another row of cards? This doesn't happen. You know, usually you'll see three when you have features, but if you have a blog, you know, a blog section or you're linking to other things, these cards will go to another line. And now you notice, like, we have this one controlling the width of our grid here, but on the second row of the grid, everything's collapsing to the height of this, of this card, which is smaller than up here. It's just kind of noticeable. So something you can do for that is if we go into the grid settings, when we auto generate a new row, rather than auto, we want this to be one FR. And we want to set the first one to one FR as well. And now these will extend to be the same size as the largest one. Something I've run into actually multiple times with different clients. So that can help. 
the last thing, if we're still like, eh, we don't know, we don't want cars to be different lengths, but we want we, the client can't change the copy. The client first has this really helpful styles embed. Let me open the code editor here, where they give us a class called textile two lines or textile three lines. So I'm just going to copy and paste textile three lines here, save and close, and I'll add it as a combo class to this card text. And now it's going to, anything that goes over three lines is just going to add those ellipses at the end. So that's a little bit of custom CSS can go a long way to making your designs more responsive, preventing overflow, all those sorts of things. So it definitely pays to, to learn that. I'm going to go ahead and delete these. Well, not yet. So now we want to make these clickable, right? So because one thing you'll notice, if they were clickable, well, I mean, they need a link. So let's right click and convert to link block. One thing that's going to mess up now is Webflow is going to throw on some extra styling for us that we actually don't want. So I'll just come into cards item and I'll say no decoration and I'll change the color back to what it, the text color back to what it was. Okay, so we're back in business. Convert this to link block, convert to link block, convert to link block, convert to link block, and convert to link block. And now we have links and we can tab through them. I'm using the keyboard here. Or we can click on them. Uh, they need to go somewhere. So let's just say, I don't know, went to google.com and have it open in a new tab. I'm not going to actually go to it right now, though. The next topic I want to cover is making these responsive. A lot of, in all the Webflow tutorials you'll see, you'll see usually they'll come down to the tablet size here, come in here, delete a column, and then do the same for mobile, delete another column. You can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But an easy way you can do it without even going into the breakpoints is come into the grid settings. And we're going to delete all of the extra columns. Bear with me for a second. Go over here to min and max. We want to set a min width, something, some definite width, like 15 rem, and then a max of one frame or one fractional unit, and we'll auto fit. And you'll see that's going to span. It's going to fit as many 15 rem cards into that space as it can. Now, I'd, I'd like to see just three, so we can up this to 16 RAM. And without touching any of the, let's make it a little bit wider, so we stay at three. They're going to just keep expanding so that they can fill the container width. Now you can see it's just going to be responsive right out the door for us. So that saves you a little bit of time, too. Okay, I'm noticing cards, uh, what do we call this, link image. And I just want a little bit of space between these. So on the flex box, I'm going to add a gap of 1 rem. Mm, let's go down to 0.25 rem. Okay, now let's think about how we want to the UX experience of these cards. We want a hover state. And we can do that directly here in Webflow. When you hover, let's say we turn the background a little bit darker just so that you can, the user can see. That's one thing we can do. And what I like to do usually is any hover state gets the same focus state. I think that's pretty good practice. And now you can see actually if we come out of the focus state here, none, and we preview, now we're getting this nice user interaction. Um, obviously, it won't work on mobile because on mobile you're just touching things. So, but there's a couple other things that I see commonly. One is on the cards item. So let's say we hover. I'll see this trans a 2D transform where you move it, maybe like minus two percent in the y direction. That's going to move it up. And then when we do that, we want to apply a sort of transition as well. And to apply the transition, uh, we'll do it in the none state. But first, let's change the focus state as well. So 2D will come minus 2%. And we'll go back to the none state. And the transition, we're going to add one to transform. We'll do 200 milliseconds. And we'll just leave it on an ease. And then the other one we want to do was the background color. Where's background color? There it is. And we'll do the same with that. And now we get this nice animated hover effect. And if I start tabbing, we get that as well. One other thing. You can only, when you're selecting the hover and the focused here, 
you can only select it on that item. So if I want to affect other things down, down here, I'm going to have to open up an interactions for that. So for the cards item, we'll make an interaction, element trigger. We'll do it on mouse hover. Unfortunately, Webflow doesn't give us a focus option there. But we'll start animation. We'll call this cards underscore hover in. And then when we hover in, we want to, let's do something. Let's scale the image in a little bit and, and make it a bit brighter. So I'm going to select the cards image here. And I'm going to say scale. Now I'm just going to set the initial state as normal scale so nothing happens. And then when we hover, we're going to scale just something really subtle. Oops, 1.1. We'll do that uh, 0.2 seconds, and we'll put that on ease out so you can see what's going on there with that. OK, we're scaling it, but remember I talked about the image wrapper. That's where this comes in, cards image wrap. All I got to do is go to style and turn overflow to hidden. And now when I come back to cards item and I run this, you'll see that we can't see the, um, um, the overflow is hidden. <laughs> it's in the name. One thing I'm noticing is that I do lose the border radius when I'm hovering. So what I can do is rather than apply the border radius to the image, I can apply it to the image wrap. And since we're hiding everything within, it's going to keep its border radius there. The other thing is that when we don't have a hover out animation right now. So we'll go ahead and fix that. We'll start an animation. We'll duplicate the hover in. We'll change this to hover out. Just going to delete this one here. We want it to go back to 1-1. One, one. It's not the initial state anymore, though. It's going to be 0.2 seconds. And we're going to ease out that one as well. So now we should get a nice little hover animation. It's only happening on this one. Oh, maybe I didn't apply the hover out. Yep. OK. So now we should get it. Hover in, hover out, hover in, hover out. But it's not applying to these other ones, so that's an easy fix. We will just apply this to the class, and then we're, we'll remove it from tablet, phone, so that it doesn't happen on tablet and phone because there's no actual hover animation that's needed there. The last thing we'll do with the hover in is we'll just change the image brightness a bit. So let's go to filter, set its initial state with no filters, and then we'll add a filter. This will be 0.2 seconds. We'll set it on an ease. We will add the brightness and just do something like 110%, maybe 115. OK, and it's telling me I have nothing. Yeah, so we need to add a filter brightness of 100% to be the initial state. OK, and then we'll edit the cards hover out. Let's add a keyframe for filter. Again, we're doing 0.2 seconds on an ease. And we're going to set the brightness back to 100 percent all right save that and now let's see what we got so you see it's getting just a little bit brighter hard to tell with these photos but it's happening and then with the focus or with the keyboard you're not getting the image zooming in and out because of what i said with the css hover state versus the webflow interactions hover state that covers really everything i want to go over i think Go ahead and delete all those. Let me just check. We covered pretty much everything. Yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching. Hope this helps. I will make this clonable or accessible somehow so that you can just come in and copy paste section cards into your website if you need a quick cards component. Um, it is a little bit styled. You know, I added color, so you'll have to update all that. But it's important to understand how these work so that when you use custom libraries, uh, you can you can edit it so that it matches your Figma design file. All right, if this helps you at all, please like and subscribe. That helps me a lot. I'm going to keep making some of these uh, layout videos because, in my opinion, getting the layouts right is just going to affect everything else in your design, your interactions, accessibility. Um, the first step in making a good website is nailing these layouts. So I'm going to cover some other ones later. Stay tuned, and bye-bye.